I understand that the Prime Minister has been able to join us now. Um, so we can begin with the official opening of the event. And I would like to introduce our guest of honour and our keynote speaker, uh, Andrei Plenković, the Prime Minister of the Republic of Croatia. Welcome, Prime Minister, and over to you. Thank you very much for joining us. Good morning, everybody, and uh, thank you very, very much for inviting me uh, to this conference, the Economist and uh, Heslis and Rivas conference on the EU recovery and the Resilience Fund and Croatia's transition. Uh, good morning to you, Madame Hoy, Madame Ortolani, to all the participants that will during the morning and later on in the program discuss various aspects of of these uh, new opportunities as we see them for the member states of the European Union, but also for Croatia. Uh, first of all, uh, I would like to say that this year has really been, that is now behind us, more than a challenging year for Croatia. It has uh, had two major uh, complex issues to deal with for the government, for the population, for the entire society. First one is, of course, just as anybody else, we were faced with the COVID-19 pandemic that has started in Croatia at the end of February last year and has never, it has since not abandoned us. The second uh, context, which was a little bit more Croatia's differentia specifica compared to the other countries, was that we were hit by two devastating earthquakes, one exactly a year ago here in the capital Zagreb and another one in the region of Banovina, which is just southeast of Zagreb, and the entire damage of these two uh, very strong earthquakes is estimated to around uh, 130 million, uh, million euros, million, million kunas, and, and it is really a huge, huge damage for us, uh, which represents a challenge for the physical reconstruction, not only the economic recovery awaiting us. When it comes to the COVID-19, uh, after the second wave, which was uh, pretty strong during November and December, we have imposed uh, restrictive measures which have subdued the dynamic of the pandemic. And we are now uh, ranking among those in the European Union with the lowest contagion numbers, uh, incidents per week or per two weeks. But however, we see the rise in last couple of weeks, just as everybody else, especially in the countries around Croatia, and this requires vigilance, this requires uh, a very, very careful and calibrated approach for the different measures that we are aiming to adopt in order to sustain the pandemic. Croatia has had two major lines on the epidemiological measures so far. One, we never imposed a complete lockdown, and second, we never opted for a curfew. So there was no curfew and no complete lockdown. In reality, that means that we were trying to protect the economy, to protect the work, to protect the schooling system, and try to establish as much as possible a uh, life as we once knew it. That means that Croatia never completely closed down the cultural sites or events such as museums, cinemas, theatres. Uh, we uh, are not obliged to wear masks in public, uh, outdoors, and um, this has helped a little bit, I think, to alleviate the pressures uh, within the society compared to some other countries who have, who have had more severe measures. As of 1st of March, we have reopened the terraces in restaurants and bars, and that has also a little bit uh, helped the atmosphere in the society. But however, uh, we need to remain very uh, serious about the pandemic. The second point is the vaccination, something you mentioned in your introductory uh, talk. Uh, just as everybody else, we are struggling to get enough vaccines in order to undertake as much as uh, vaccination process before the summer. Currently, Croatia has vaccinated 9.3 of uh, our adult population. These numbers are increasing on a daily basis. We are one of those countries that ordered more Astra AstraZeneca vaccines at the beginning than others, than other pharmaceutical companies' vaccines. And that has uh, clearly slowed down uh, 
the process and the pace of vaccination because of these delays in production and uh, deliveries. But we are now trying to find different ways in order to catch up uh, for the delivery of those vaccines that we are currently lacking. Another element which uh, is important for you to, to hear from me is to understand the overall economic situation. Croatia's um, GDP uh, fell in 2020 8.4%, uh, just behind Spain, Greece and Malta, who, who had a, a bigger fall of the GDP. But according to our own estimates, to according to the estimates of the European Commission, we expect a significant uh, recovery and the growth forecast is 5.3% in 2021. So we should be among the top three performing countries with the highest GDP growth uh, during this year together with Spain and France. Uh, our tourist season last year was uh, relatively okay when we look at the other countries in the Mediterranean. Uh, the tourist overnights was 55% lower than in 2019. This was the, the record-breaking year for the Croatian tourism. Uh, but uh, these numbers enabled us to have a slightly better uh, tourist season than, than the other countries. We have had uh, a strong policy of support to the private sector in order to keep the jobs uh, for our for our um, citizens in the private sector. It was a massive program uh, that was organized by the Ministry of Labor and our Institute for Employment, meaning that the state stepped in and paid uh, the salaries for uh, the employees in the private sector. It covered uh, more than 650,000 people, more than 100,000 businesses. It was a quick and uh, strong measure that has basically enabled us to be one year after the start of the crisis, more or less the same numbers of those who are employed and those who are unemployed. And we also uh, helped our uh, businesses uh, with liquidity in order to bridge these difficult times that we were all facing over the past 12 months. In this, we combined a uh, European Union, uh, different sources, different funds, the state budget. We managed to find adequate financing, both at the domestic financial market, at the international financial markets, uh, good cooperation with pension funds, with the Croatian Central Bank, with the European Central Bank. And I would say that financially, we are investment credit rating at the level of investment rating. Even today, as we speak last night, Standard & Poor's reconfirmed Croatia's investment rating. So investment grade. So I think from that point of view, we really did the maximum that we could. Uh, when it comes to the recovery and resilience plan, first to see a bit of a context how we, we put this document and the work that has been invested in it in the wider uh, uh, sense of what we have as strategic documents. My main objective as the Prime Minister was to stream the work of the side ministries in order to have the National Recovery and Resilience Plan fully fitting with the National Development Strategy of Croatia, which was adopted by the Croatian Parliament. Parliament January. This is a 10-year development strategy, 2021-2030. Second, that it fits fully with the new government program. You will know that we had parliamentary elections back in the fifth, on the 5th of July, and Croatia, as a ruling party, my party, Croatian Democratic Union, had a convincing win, and this is our second mandate, so we have a lot of continuity. The third element was that everything fits uh, with in the context of the national reform program and, of course, with the action plan of so-called post-commitments after we joined the exchange rate mechanism 2 on the 10th of July uh, last year. So these four elements, together with the classical country-specific recommendations that the European Commission has for every single member state, were guiding lines on how we should structure our national uh, program for the recovery and resilience. What is the, uh, the tactics? Just as most of the EU member states, our approach is first 
to agree on the part of the grants of the National uh, uh, Recovery and Resilience Plan. I will uh, remind you it is 6.3 billion euros in the form of grants, which is around 12% of Croatia's GDP. This is more than any other EU member state comparatively. This is something I personally advocated during the negotiations at the European Council uh, in the course of last year. You will remember that Croatia in this semester last year was also in for the first time ever in the seat of the chair of the, of the Council of the European Union. And in this context, we wanted to accentuate the fact that we were the newest member of the European Union. We joined in July 2013. Croatia, in the context of the, let's say, dependence uh, quite a lot on the tourism sector, and of course, uh, connecting uh, sectors such as transport or hospitality sector, we suffered a lot uh, from the COVID pandemic and therefore uh, we advocated all of these arguments in the context of the defining of the amounts for uh, various countries. So first, the 6.3 billion euros loans, then we will move and we are working on it hard to prepare uh, Croatia's part of the next multi-annual financial framework. This is another 12.7 billion euros for Croatia. And then the third component is going back to the RRF, which is the EU Next Generation, where we have another 3.6 billion euros loans available. So this is the one, two, three plan, to put it very simply. How did we structure the plan? What are the areas where we see uh, this part of the extraordinary EU financing that the leaders agreed upon last year uh, is in six uh, parts. First one is the economy, of course. This is the largest one where the focus will be on the green transition of the Croatian economy, the energy transition, the water waste management, transport system, resilient tourism and strengthening of the food supply chain. Uh, the other aspect is the public administration and justice, especially the reform in the justice administration system, uh, state property system, better governance and everything related to, to this area. Then of course the education, science and research, which is extremely important. This is the real, uh, I would say, systemic way to catch up with the global trends, with the fourth industrial revolution, with the competitiveness at the global and European level. The fourth one is the labor and the social protection. This is where we need uh, strengthen the, both the legislation and measures that will create uh, more jobs, especially the self-employment, and uh, also ensure the uh, social inclusion in the society through the adequate social protection. The fifth one is the healthcare system. This is this part of the Croatia's uh, administration that is, I would say, overstretched over the last year, year and is uh, always in difficulty of financing. This is where we do lack uh, in a number of years behind us, a, uh, I would say, a clear house in trying to reform the healthcare system so that it is more efficient, more accessible, but also that it creates less uh, losses for the budget. Uh, finally, the sixth component is the so-called initiative, which is related to the reconstruction of buildings. This is especially important for to complement what we are doing through the EU Solidarity Fund and other various sources that we are negotiating with, with the EIB, with the EBRD, with the Council of Europe Development Bank, how uh, to find funds that will enable um, a reconstruction of both public houses, but also the private housing, which was very, very much hit. We, of course, are trying to combine uh, the number of uh, reforms and the investment projects with the criteria that is on the table. Everybody is aware of them. This is the green and the digital transition, 37% of green, 20% of digital, and also to match everything that we are putting on paper uh, with the so-called notion do no significant harm, which is, of course, related to the various environment protection criteria. Uh, in that respect, uh, we are now in the phase that uh, the next week we shall launch the process of the public consultations on this docu <coughs> document. <coughs> I think it's important that we hear the feedback of the various stakeholders 
We will also, in the mid of April, uh, have a consultative debate as an information point uh, to the plenary of the Croatian Parliament. I very much advocate presentation of the European issues to the Croatian parliamentarians. For instance, after every single European Council, I go in front of the plenary and explain what was discussed, what was debated, in order to increase uh, the awareness of both the political uh, parties and actors, but also the Croatian parliament public, what are the key issues on the European table. Uh, from that point of view, our initial agenda is to uh, have the national plan for recovery and resilience adopted at the government session on the 29th of um, April, so as to be able to send it on time. That is this uh, principal uh, deadline, which is the end of April, that we agreed with the Commission how to send it. Um, final point is <clears throat> on the exchange rate mechanism 2 and the Eurozone. Uh, you are aware that Croatia has two major objectives when it comes to the EU. One is the joining the Schengen area and the second one is joining the Euro area. We are advancing on both of these uh, objectives very uh, clearly, concretely. Uh, Ten days ago, at the level of the Justice and Home Affairs Ministers, there was a, a final uh, evaluation by the European Commission on all the technical issues. And during the Portuguese presidency, uh, this Commission report was uh, adopted. Now we move on to more political uh, uh, field uh, where we need to get the political support of our uh, partners within the European Union to, to join the Schengen area. And this will be certainly one of the key elements on our political agenda in the contacts with our uh, friends. The second point is Eurozone. Here, uh, not only that we have adopted the strategy for the adoption of Euro back in May 2018, we really were on time with everything prior to joining the exchange rate mechanism to we are on track with fulfilling the post commitments by the March 2022 in the four major areas. This is especially the money laundering, uh, uh, everything that is related to the money laundering initiative and the legislation. The second one is the better governance uh, in terms of uh, public companies, in terms of general better governance in Croatia. The third one uh, is, of course, uh, improving the investment and the business climate in Croatia to have everything a little bit more predictable, stable when it comes to the legal and tax framework. And of course, the fourth uh, element is the general fight against corruption and the reform of judiciary, which is, I would say, a systemic issue that every single country, whether it is in the EU or outside of the EU, has, always, uh, has to always have uh, on mind. Um, the timeline <clears throat> after the government has adopted the so-called um, convergence plan, so the plan to exchange the Croatian kuna for the euro. We have given ourselves two years for that exercise and we shall be trying uh, to fulfill the necessary criteria, the mastery criteria when it comes to the budgetary deficit and the public debt before COVID-19 crisis, we were really on track to fill all the fiscal criteria. Uh, now uh, there is this general escape clause for the stability and growth pact at the European level. Uh, we feel uh, in a way covered by it because we are all in the same situation and therefore we try to uh, work hard to get back to those numbers which we uh, proudly uh, claimed in 2017-2018-19, where Croatia had a, either a balanced budget or a budgetary surplus, uh, with uh, the really rapidly diminishing public debt, and uh, that has enabled us to really strengthen our reputation among the international financial markets and the institutions. So uh, this is where we find ourselves today. Uh, I see this EU next generation really as a great move of the European Union. I think it is a gesture where the EU shows it's there for the member states, it's there for the European citizens, just as much uh, Croats as anybody else. And I think we need to be agile. We need to be um, capable of uh, using this extra 
opportunity which we have because this is a generational opportunity in my view when i look at the numbers for the next 10 years we uh, in principle have 9.6 billion euros from the EU next generation. We have 12.7 billion euros for the multi-annual financial framework. We have uh, almost a billion euros coming from the EU funds for the reconstruction after the earthquakes. There is the react EU mechanism, there is the just transition fund. Plus we need to spend in next three years uh, 5 billion euros from the previous financial framework. So altogether, Croatia has in total available 30 billion euros for the recovery and uh, resilience uh, and the development, national development from 2020 to 2030. And I think this is the year where we should really uh, definitely leave behind all of those uh, uh, transition uh, from socialist uh, economic system to the capitalism to market economy completely behind and emphasize those economic sectors which will which will be really the drivers of our economic development and our competitiveness at european and global level so um, a lot of uh, good preparation work has been done I think we have all the tools available. Now it's uh, up to, of course, the government, but also all the other actors involved to seize the moment and uh, make this fourth decade of Croatia's independence a truly consolidating decade in like terms. There is only one thing which is left for us, and that is the economy economy and economy in uh, the year ahead of us, of course, uh, along with the strengthening of our institutions. I thank you very much for this opportunity, and I'm sure that my ministers will, in the course, in the course of debate, offer more details in various sectors of uh, reforms that are being planned or undertaken. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed, Prime Minister. We really appreciate that you took the time this morning to open this very important event and uh, your remarks are tremendously useful and we will be um, looking at all of those issues that you raised in more detail throughout the day. So thanks very much again and uh, have a good day. Thank you. Thank you once again. Uh, have a very good conference. You, you will excuse me, but there are a number of issues waiting uh, in the next room. Sure. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you.